guest and only guest of the day. Um, his band has been creating energetic pop rock and pump punk music uh, since forming in 2011. Their new single, Violet, just came out today. Uh, and their new album, Greatest Hits, as you know, comes out this Friday, May 21st. Everybody, please welcome from the band Water Parks, Austin Knight. Yeah. Hey, Austin. Oh, how you doing? I can't, I can't really hear you too well. You might put in the mic a bit. What about right now? Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just get right in there. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to this the, is an uh, ASMR interview. <laughs> <laughs> so happy to have you on, man. The, the chat has been going crazy all day. Oh my god, they're flying. The comments are flying right now. Everybody's super happy. They're saying, "Oh, a lot of people are just saying handsome." So you know, handsome. thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yo, I was on here watching the. Uh, the I didn't know y'all were doing like a BTS cover kind of thing. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, we are. We're doing a, yeah, we, the cover of June, the Rolling Stone issue is just a photo of all of them kind of in a frame. But uh, after that, we're doing a, a cover for each day for the next, uh, I think for the next two days or something. All, all seven members are getting their own digital cover, which is pretty sweet. That's dope. Yeah. You, you a big fan of BTS? Dude, their videos, I've never been so jealous of somebody's like production. It's oh, so crazy. And like, I've got so many friends that are like super into them. And so I've been getting like the videos slowly brought to my attention and like the songs slowly brought to my attention. I am like, like, how do I, how do I not? I don't think anything scares me more than like the BTS army. I know. I know. It's they, good. they love, they can love and they can take it away anytime. <laughs> really? Like. I think if they decided they wanted me dead, like it would be done oh, by like this afternoon. It could happen. Like uh, that would make the transition to an actual army. <laughs> and then, I like, it's so wild. They literally affect their country's economy. It's pretty crazy. I feel like uh, anybody that. that gets into any Twitter beef with beef with any member of BTS, I feel like are automatically stricken down. Rest in peace. Yeah. Goodbye. It was nice seeing you, but we won't be anymore. <laughs> I love them though. Like I wish, like when I see their videos, my first thought besides like, dang, they're all beautiful is like, I wish I could dance. Yo. Oh my God. Whoa. Sam. Oh yeah. We got emojis on the screen today. What? <laughs> okay. Do it again. Yeah. So anytime anybody in the chat sends an emoji, it's just going to pop up on the screen. So Chad, if you send some emotes, come on, they're going to explode all over them on the screen. Look at that. Oh, the oh, there yeah. we go. There they go. Bouncing up. <laughs> Are those purple hearts? I'm not a oh, veteran. Yeah. Now, oh, man. Now everybody's on it. Their Doritos yeah. flying. Their purple hearts. Their red hearts. They're throwing Doritos? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they're Cool Ranch. That's my favorite. Oh, yeah. Cool Ranch is superior. I'll back you. <laughs> Agreed. What is happening? This looks like the worst <laughs> video game of all time. Like, I'm the monster. And they're like... <laughs> <laughs> oh man hilarious uh well uh austin as you get showered in emotes uh yeah. i wanted to thank you for coming on the stream and uh, talk to you a bit about uh you know the band and what you guys have been up to lately and how y'all started uh but first thing i, I really want to talk about is what music you really grew up listening to i grew up uh mainly listening to van halen and the beach boys oh. Cool. Those are my dad's favorites. I saw the Beach Boys like 13 times live. Oh my God. That I was like actually personally like, I love this. Because at the time I was just like, yeah, I'm going with my dad to some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, totally. But, yeah, I, I feel that. Our tech director, Ian, is probably the biggest Beach Boys fan that you could find. <laughs> yeah. He tries to he tries to insert the Beach Boys into every show as much as he can. Uh, it, it's It's pretty wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get it for him. Okay, cool. Thank you. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but cool. Yeah, so a lot of Van Halen, a lot of Beach Boys. And yeah, my mom was really into like Prince. Oh, um, cool. Okay, so both sides of the spectrum. You had some disco, you had some rock, you had some classic. Yeah. Right. That's and cool. then in like fourth grade, I heard Fat Lip by Sum 41 in, the, in my dad's car. And I was like, yo, what is this? <laughs> and uh, um, so I started getting really into that and like uh, Good Charlotte and nice. Green Day and Blank and you know, Jimmy Eat World and shit. And, yeah, uh, all the good stuff. And that led into like Mike, Kim, AFI, 
uh, like taking back Sunday. You know what I mean? Like it all just like kept like Fallout Boy. It, it all just kept. Yeah, it up. just keeps snowballing in that direction. Definitely. Right. So yeah, when I started playing guitar, um, at first I would just be like really like they my I got a guitar. I think mm-hmm. I was twelve, about to thir- turn thirteen or something like that, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, I would just like just wail on like an open thing. It sounded just dog shit, and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and my parents were like, okay, fuck it. Let's get him lessons. Like, so we don't have to hear this shit anymore. And, um, so I took lessons for a couple of years and yeah. I, like, it was nice. Cause I was like, oh my God, I'm actually like learning. Oh my God. And, um, my dad, uh, we didn't have like a printer mm-hmm. and or we had one, but it was just like, so shit. And like internet back then, like at that point, like we just had terrible internet. I, oh, yeah. I bet that in retrospect, like other people actually had good stuff going on, but ours is just nothing. <laughs> it was terrible. And so. And he's a nurse. And so he would at the hospital, he mm-hmm. would like print off like he'd give me like a Green Day song or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then he'd also print off like Van Halen, Guns N' Roses, Ooh. whatever. Oh, okay, so, good. So he like he gave you what you wanted, but he was like, but also this, if you could like, just give me a Weezer song, but then he'd also be like, <laughs> by the way, here's this Black Sabbath thing and like <laughs> Or an eruption by Van Halen, and I'm like, oh god, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, gets you your first guitar, like, okay, cool. So eruption, right? That's what you're gonna be playing. <laughs> I uh, there was a, I, I got close to learning it. I know all the tapping parts. Uh, wow, that's the part that I just impress him. So Those are the parts that's that are the most impressive. So that's that's the good stuff. That's pretty funny. I, I that's what a what an awesome dad. Like to give you kind of what you wanted because I mean, like of course, like the over strummy kind of stuff, like the Green Days of the world and the Paramours of the world, which like are fantastic, are a great thing to learn, especially for early guitar playing. And then, but for your dad to come in and just be like, but also you got to get the classics in. You got to learn the good stuff. But I think that's why I'm like, I'm good at doing like solo stuff. I just don't mm. do it that much because I just have no interest in like attracting guitar nerds because <laughs> they're just ruthless. They're ruthless people. Dude, they are. I, I haven't really talked shop with somebody about guitars in quite a while, but I feel like I'm always like, if I'm talking to somebody that's a guitar guy, I'm always out talked. Like there's no way I can get around it. I can be like, oh, you guys, uh, you guys ever hear this brand called uh, Paul Reed Smith? And they're like, oh yeah, you got it. I got a 12 gauge Paul Reed Smith with a whammy. And I'm like, okay, all right. I can't. <laughs> okay. yeah. like, that's the thing, dude. Like, you know, I love Avenged Sevenfold. That was the thing I was trying to learn a bunch early on, too. Oh, yeah. But, uh, I love Avenged. They're some of the best guitarists. Like, it's cr- like Sinister Gates is insane. He's ridiculous. I think, like, like in. Going- yeah. Continue. Sorry. No, keep going. I was going to say, but you go on YouTube mm. and, like, you know, obviously there's like fans and stuff, but then you see people like, he's playing it so sloppy and he's not even using the right. I'm just like, dude, if you guys hate him, I don't want you anywhere near me. Yeah, like, dude. No. No, no, no. I, I feel like the sloppiness is kind of what's attractive about it, though. I really love, like, in System of a Down, like Darren Malakian, like, he plays guitar. Like, they were saying, like, when they were recording for System of a Down, that they just stopped trying to get things perfect because he just couldn't yeah. do it. And he just, he's just a sloppy guy, but it sounds great. But at least live, it's not like, oh, he fucks it up live every time. It's like, oh, he sounds just like the record. Right. <laughs> That's the kind of nuance that we like to see. Yeah. No, it's good. It's kind of like the hives. Like, I want to start implementing way more voice cracks in our mm. songs. That way, if I yeah, fuck up live, are great. That's, like the, that's like the song. You know, he's like, oh, that's a long, ah, no. you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like that old school garage rocky kind of, yeah, like unpolished. I'm trying to be like the Vaughn. Man. And uh, well, you, you talked about, you know, listening to Van Halen, Beach Boys, but also how was the scene in yeah. Houston when you guys got started, when you really got started with water parks? As far as bands, like Houston's like very like hip hop oriented, but yeah. as far as bands go, the entire thing, it was just hardcore and metalcore and everybody wow. was doing it for Christ. Wow. <laughs> Damn. And uh, uh, yeah, so I mean, I, and I was never in bands that were really like that. Uh, I mean, you know, here and there we'd, kind of partake and be like fuck it we'll be like a little tough too but you know it just that was never really like i think i always just had like like pop sensibilities if that you know what i mean like like tendencies yeah and and so um yeah i mean growing up i started being in bands when i was like 13 wow and and you know we would hang out at the local venues every weekend Mm. and if you would drop they'd be like you want to play we're like yes (laughs) like yeah absolutely what time 3 a.m we'll be there (laughs) Exactly. My friend would call yeah. his mom and be like, can you please bring the drum yeah. to John Wilson? Like, <laughs> hey mom, can you bring my drum kit? <laughs> like for real. And um, 
So, I mean, we were always on these lineups mm -hmm. forever, even like through like being a teenager and like, you know, starting water parks and everything. Yeah. Um, like we're always on lineups with like a bunch of real hard shit. So people would be like punching each oh, other. Oh yeah. Back like some over. crazy, like metal core stuff. And so, yeah. yeah like, mm -hmm. Airy shows, but yeah. And then it'd be like us and we're like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Like, all right, guys, let's have some fun today. Like, throw a Weezer. Like, it's like, it's like, there's like, <laughs> it's like, there's a bunch of just like real heavy shit. There's like, like a bunch of guar bands or whatever just without <laughs> costumes. And then you throw Weezer in there and everyone's like, <laughs> yeah. I can't punch my friend in the mouth to this. What is this? <laughs> but, if I uh, can't punch my friend in the mouth to it, it's not music. Mm -hmm. Right. So. When I, when I started water parks, uh, I kind of understood how things worked at that point. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to try and like get onto these shows. I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to book our own and mm -hmm. then we'll just bring friends. Nice. You know what? I mean? And keep them small, keep it like intimate. And that's what it, that's kind of like how it worked. I am like, you know, we'd get these 120 cap rooms mm. and work really hard for like a month and a half or whatever, two months to like sell it out. Wow. You know which, which is cool because like our first show is like technically sold out, even though it's like a small room. That's awesome. Cause yeah. Cause when you're in those small rooms, it looks so much bigger cause it's so full. Exactly. So mm -hmm. the thing is every show was like sold out, sold out, oh, sold out. Oh yeah. Okay. Promoters, promoters started being like, we should get them to open for so much <laughs> when they come through. They sell out shows. It's like, you don't even know. It's like, only oh, like, yeah. a <laughs> you know, that's great. And you, you had to, you had to hand sell tickets and stuff to friends and whatnot too. What I would do mm -hmm. was I would tell people which malls I was going to, like we were going to be at, you know what I mean? Like with, you know, Jeff and Otto, yeah. I'd be like, all right, 3 p.m. We're at Memorial, 5 p.m. We're at Willowbrook, uh, 7 p.m. We're at the Woodlands wow. and then we'd go to like Deerbrook or, you know, whatever. Like there was just like different malls we did or like first colony out in like, wow. like Stanford. That's um, a great so idea to like days where we would drive around, you know, we'd only sell like mm. maybe like four or five tickets at each one. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that adds up. Right. You know, what? right. You exactly. Like you two. sell five tickets at three different malls. That's already 15 people. You got coming to your show, exactly. which is like, huge. Even if that's all you did for that week, you just do that on repeat. And like, you know what I mean? Two months, your yeah. show sold out. Man, that's pretty sweet. That's a great idea too. Like really being around the malls, especially like given back in the day and like that time period, like we're talking like Hot Topic was at its height, like Journeys, things like that. I feel like those areas in the mall were like also real hotbeds for kind of music in that. Oh yeah, we'd have like flyers and like yeah. demo. If I could afford it that week, like demo CDs. Cool. You know, or I'd like burn two songs, like two demos onto it and be like, check it out. Man, that's cool. Now, now after, you know, you started playing these shows, how did you really define the band's sound after a while? I knew what I wanted it to be. I just didn't always know how to fully articulate it. Mm -hmm. Like I, I knew I wanted to do everything. I wanted there to be like a lot of electronic stuff, a lot mm -hmm. of like pop things. Um, but like still like, you know, go hard. And you can like find people like in like there's even like like fast vocal things or like program stuff or like vocal cuts and glitches like you can find all that stuff on the earlier EPs mm -hmm. it's just you can tell it wasn't refined yet and gotcha. so uh but I knew like really early I was like we need to always be doing everything that way the doors just open no matter what it's not like okay here's what we're gonna do we're gonna make like a bunch of punk EPs and then we're gonna switch over it's like no dude like <laughs> Like, and you can hear it with every release. Like, I mean, yeah, I go listen to like cluster double dare, just like early stuff. And you'll see that there's just like such a wide variety of genres because I just knew it was like important to all like, just set that expectation mm -hmm. of like, there's going to be a lot going on. Like, yeah, on, that way you don't get to album five and like, you want to make some Daft Punk shit and people right. are like, Fuck you. Yeah, right, right. That's yeah. nice. You can tease it out. It's not like a, like a Slayer situation where every album is pretty much the same. And it's like, how can we differentiate? And if you try to differentiate, your fans like lash out and they're like, you can't do that. This is, this is the sound that you're supposed to do. So it, it's nice, especially early on too. And like, I mean, like even like airplane conversation, like as early as that and as early as Blacklight, those EPs, you can really tell the differentiation of sounds. Even within those, the, the track listings are very like, okay, like here's a punky song. Here's a poppy punky song. Here's a really like softer song. So it's really nice how it worked out that way. I never thought I would hear those EP names on Rolling Stone. <laughs> but 
Also, yeah, no, that's totally a thing. Like you can't like that's that's one thing that I've like just never wanted to do is like try and compete with something you've already done by making something as similar mm -hmm. because you're never going to beat the same. Like if, you, if, if we tried to make the same album over and over, yeah. you're never going to beat what you did because you're not only objectively just going against those songs. Like it's not just like a, is this song better than this song? Like you're competing right. with people's nostalgia and memories and feelings and all this shit they've built up towards it. And like they, it like holds a special place here. So it's not even just about whether or not the songs are better. It's like yeah. you beat everyone's nostalgia and you're just, you can't. Right. And it's impossible. It's an impossible feat to conquer. And I think, you know, kind of even serving to fandom, uh, that's like your most recent LP that came out. Uh, th that is like, that. I, I think that is an exact example of that is going forward and just being like, we're just going to do what we want to do. And we think this is in our wheelhouse. And so we're going to write these songs and it's going to be great. And it was. Yeah. And oh, thank you. Um, it like we we live in a time where people like everything pretty much. Yeah. You know what I mean? So to like limit yourself to being like, well, better make 12 rock songs. It's like, oh, my God, it's so fucking boring. I could never like it just sounds hard. Yeah. No, that's understandable, too, because, yeah, especially in today's day and age, you, you made a great point because I feel like everybody out there is like, you know, I like everything. I listen to anything. So then why should you have to define the band by a certain sound? You could go out, be whatever you want to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, oh, with, with that, Austin, I know, um, you got some songs to play today for us. So, uh, I feel like I, I can go ahead and get, let you get into your first song. If you want to grab your guitar. Oh, this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it puts arm around it. Yeah. <laughs> some songs for you wait where are all the hearts hey i need way more hearts in the chat yeah all right now i'll start um uh, where's that capo mm -mm -mm -mm. yep that's what i want to see on the screen keep it going this whole song all right <clears throat> you be paranoid too People treat me like I'm an asshole, but I don't text when I drive them. I can't say that they're all wrong, though, cause I still use straws on the down low. I learn to live with these eyes, in my closet hands, in my pockets. I'm alone but surrounded, I'm breathing, I'm drowning, haven't slept in days but who's counting? Yeah. You'd be paranoid too, if everyone you knew was out to get you. You'd be paranoid too If everyone you knew Was out to get you Cause I might just rent a hotel room Light a couple candles Find out that I'm cancelled Shit! However, I bought a bunch of candies Much as they would give me At the CVS, my plan B Cause I might just lose my shit up By the balcony room one or three Yeah, that's my purgatory Until I end it all Shit, whoops! I got a little dark Yeah, things get a little hard When you got eyes In my closet hands in my pockets, you'd be paranoid too If everyone you knew was out to get you You'd be paranoid too If everyone you knew was out to get you Alright, put some hearts in the chat for Jeff Solo This is a Jeff Guitar Solo original any moment I cut it off Cause I got what I wanted or at least I thought uh, Yeah, I'm a little bit of a little bitch so I might turn around and say some stupid shit No, to have a pretty moment and I cut it off Yeah You'd be paranoid too If everyone you do was out to get you to get you yeah i'm a little bit of a little bitch so i might turn around and say some stupid shit no i'm a little bit of a little bitch so i might turn around and say some stupid shit no yeah 
Thank you. Dude, that was great. <laughs> Love that. Yo, Jeff's guitar solo was killer on that. I can sing it, but I'm not gonna. Actually, in the, in the recording, I sang it behind the solo, like behind the actual Oh, you guitar. did? Whoa. <laughs> whatever yeah it's like in the recording <laughs> that's great could you also come out with a version of that song with just you doing the solo with your with your mouth that would be great of course <laughs> Any, i'll do anything for you ah oh, thanks man thanks austin <laughs> well um i mean that i i love hearing that song and uh it's from obviously your new material new album's coming out friday uh greatest hits, baby. Greatest hits. first of all um are you really jazzed about it really excited yes are you kidding me? Also, even if I wasn't, I would probably lie just a little bit right now. But no, I totally am, though, because good, good. songs are insane. Like, I don't want to be like an asshole about it. But, dude, 108 demos were made. It was so hard to cut it down. That means everything on this album is, like, best of the best. And they're still all so different from each other and shit. Like, it's, it's fucking next level. And it's also the first album where, like, I have, like, a producer credit. So that makes me super Whoa. fucking excited. See, yeah. that's that's pretty awesome. Who who have you been working with to uh, produce your past albums comparatively? Zach Vini. Who? Zach Savini did fandom and he's a oh. fucking he is wow. so good. Like 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 that dude brings shit to the next fucking level every time. Like he's and like he he gets like he's all shy and like humble and shit, but dude, no, I'm just saying he's the next like Eric Valentine. Like he's that fucking dude. Man, that's awesome. I mean, that must be why I, I think like the production on all the albums that you've released have been solid. Even since like even since Double Dare, and I, I found it surprising that Double Dare was also uh, like the first LP you ever released because I, I felt like you released so much music before then with all the I, EPs. I told I I, I always yeah. said I was like I want to wait till I feel like people care about us before <laughs> we make it like at least some. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I feel that. It's a good way to go about it because I feel like then you gather so much interest and everybody's like, when's the album? And then when you're getting requests for an album, like, okay, that's that's when you know it's good. You don't want to be a like a local band and like 30 people know about you and yeah. you're like, all right, time to make this 20 song concept album with, the, you know what I mean? It's just yeah, like, dude. I mean, yeah. Like, honestly, if it, if it makes you feel fulfilled, fucking go for it. But like, just as far as like, if you're trying to be like a little smart about it, yeah it's not cheap sorry for burping i got it. wild <laughs> no worries it's a no yeah it's a lot to take in too if you were to just release an album without any singles or really any fanfare it would kind of be like okay i mean here's 20 songs from a band that i've never heard before why yeah. would i listen to this right exactly. yeah mm -hmm. you, you have to look at it from like other people's points of view just a little bit you know what i mean like be you don't have to like make decisions based on other people just be aware yeah, you know, absolutely. Like, Even uh, throwing it back to kind of uh, the beginnings of the band, I know you guys got involved with a lot of legendary uh, musicians pretty early, like the guys from Good Charlotte. And you also had um, uh, Milky Way play on a track or on an EP for you guys. Um, what what was that like? <laughs> oh, Mikey Way. Fuck. I always call him Milky Way. <laughs> Sorry. I call him Milky Way with my friends all the time. <laughs> That didn't oh, mean to like come that. out that way. I didn't know if that was on purpose or not. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Every time me and my friends talk about My Chemical Romance, we're like, oh yeah, Gerard Way and Milky Way, my favorite members of My Chemical Romance. <laughs> He's the fucking best, dude. He is so sweet. Like, it's crazy because they're like, arguably like one of the biggest bands in the world. And there's just like, like I, I've never detected like ego from him. Yeah, that's great. He's awesome. Like, That's so, so cool. it was, yeah, I mean, like real, like started demoing and like late 2011, trying to figure out this idea. Like Jeff and Otto weren't involved yet. Mm -hmm. the 20, like I consider like our start to be 2012. Cause it's like, Oh, we recorded things. Right. Jeff and Otto joined. We did our first show, all this stuff. But then it was just every single day of like promoting and working and doing all this stuff. Finally in 2015. Yeah. Um, it was either Benji or Joel. One of them DM'd us and was like, yo, love your stuff. Like we should meet. And I'm like, <gasps> like, you know what I mean? Like I was like babysitting. Wow. Like I was babysitting every day and like teaching guitar lessons afterwards. That was like my, my thing. 
And I was like at those people's house and I was just like, oh, what the fuck? And um, that was a fucking experience. Wow. Um, but yeah, like, and when we were, when we were at the, uh, the studio at one point, mm. uh, Mikey came through and we were just like, oh shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like we, we had never really like left Texas. You know what I mean? Like we didn't fucking know anyone. We had no connections. Like, wow. Like literally, like my dad's a nurse. My mom's a PE teacher. Like it wasn't like, but his uncle works right. at Capitol. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. um, exactly. But yeah, and it was just like, it was just such a weird thing because you grow up like loving these people and learning their songs and like watching their DVDs all the mm-hmm. time. And like, Fuck, you know, or like even seeing them live and being like, holy shit. And then you just yeah. meet them and you're like, like, hey, right, like you, you're the guy that did that thing uh, up like, there. <laughs> don't be weird. Don't be weird. Yeah, right. uh, yeah. I imagine it was a lot of like, you want to talk me to me? Yeah. As- <laughs> like, it was funny because when we came out here um, the first time we, you know, we got off the plane. We went and met Benji and Joel and they were like, we're going to go to Nobu. And we we're like, OK, we're just like <laughs> ignorant Texas kids. We had no idea like what that meant. <laughs> And like I learned later that that's like a flex. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> that's okay. so funny. I can't even picture Benji and Joel at Nobu. Honestly, I'm sure they. It's a lovely spot. It's a lovely restaurant. I haven't been back since. Uh, <laughs> I, I get back soon though. I saw Charlie Puth tweet Nobu, and I was like, true. And so now we're like, I'm gonna just like this and turn off my phone for the night. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Um, and also when you were, I want to talk about, uh, before you hop into your next few songs, I do want to talk about fandom a bit and, uh, a little bit about your inspiration behind that album and the recording process, because I know it was a lot about, um, like negativity that you've experienced and things like that. So, um, how was that whole process for you in recording that? It was odd because I'm gonna put this guitar down. Yeah, sure. That's not odd. That was a separate thought. Oh. <laughs> Because I'm going to put this guitar down. Um, so, you know, we had made, we had recorded mm-hmm. another album and it just wasn't right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just kind of like, like you, you sort of know, like I was, I was actually, I was talking to Joel earlier about this, mm-hmm. um, but you, you like, like with each album, like I need each one to be better than the last one. Like just, yeah. just, you have to know and otherwise it's just not going to come out. And with this one, I, I recorded it and I was like, okay, cool. Or we recorded it. And I was like, okay, dope. And it just, I don't know. Like we'd play it for people or like, you know, like just whatever, like friends. Mm. And I was like, I, I caught myself like over explaining things like, oh, that's mm. going to be uh louder or like fixed. Or, mm-hmm. You know what? I, just, like a whole lot of stuff like that. Yeah. And I just I wasn't getting that feeling. And I was just like, I don't like this. And then, at the same time, it was like more like relationship focused and not to say that fandom wound up having none of that. Cause I mean, some of the songs like carried over like a few of, or like, you know, some of them, but I was like, you know, I don't want, cause like a, an album cycle lasts like a year and a half. Right. Yeah. I don't want to be singing about this fucking thing a year and a half from now. Like I want to be fucking moved on. Like these people, like if someone like kind of fucks with you, it, they don't deserve your time and attention like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, I actually feel like I have more shit that I want to say anyway right now. And that's when a lot more of like the, the fandom ideas came in because I think a big aspect of, or like a big part of what made, you know, that relationship ending thing kind of tough and like, you know, touring afterwards and stuff. It was like, just so like, it was like all the, ne- or a lot of the negativity was like so fan generated, mm-hmm. and I was like, you know? And I, I've and I've always had my like thoughts and opinions on like the culture and like alternative stuff and how people you know are towards alternative artists mm-hmm. that you know like that exists solely or exclusively in the genre. Um, and I was like, you know what? And that's, that's, that's where stuff like Watch What Happens Next and like the yeah. Sex Police Don't Want to Die Anymore came from. It's like you, I was I just I just felt like I, there was more interesting stuff I wanted to say, you know? Yeah. I mean, that makes a lot of sense, especially when you were talking about 
you know, playing it back for your friends, the other album that you're planning on releasing and you being like, oh, OK, this is this is going to be different, though, when it when it comes out like it's going to be. Yeah, I feel like that is exactly when, you know, and when you start to get kind of defensive about a work instead of being proud of a work. I feel like that's exactly when, you know, uh, that it's not the work for you. The greatest hits. Every time I play for anyone, I'm like, listen to this yeah. part. <laughs> right. Right. Yo, y'all come here, listen to this banger. Exactly. Like that's, that's the attitude you got to have. <laughs> Keyboard's fucking crazy. <laughs> and for, um, for fandom, I mean, one of, one of my favorite songs is, uh, is turbulent and also uh, high definition, but I feel like they're so like contrasted in their styles. Um, how did you approach writing, uh, one or the other, whether it was energetic or more soft-spoken? So I, I've, I got really into like, cause you know, before, I mean, not, and not always, but before uh, like things, the energies matched a lot in songs, like dynamically, like mm -hmm. with the email and the vocals both being like a chaotic thing. But, you know, lyrically, I've always liked having like bright or like, I like having like a bright instrumental and then like really dark lyrics. Yes. Right. You know what I mean? I just love that juxtaposition. Totally. And I was like, you know what? I should actually apply that to like vocal performance too, because when you have like one of the hardest, darkest, fastest instrumentals, like turbulent. Mm. Where it's like like this like evil breakbeat thing Ooh, yeah. with like glittery fucking just crazy shit all over it. You sing softer on it and it sounds even more like yeah like menacing. It's kind of like hearing uh hearing a little girl or a little boy in a horror movie. You're like, oh yeah, <laughs> idea. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like um, but yeah, I mean applying it to a song that's kinda I think the way the way it goes, because I mean, if you're just like at 10 the whole time, like that, 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 like right. dynamic zoop, and it's right. just not that exciting. Right. Because like flat is flat, no matter where it is. If it's up here, if it's up here, if it's like on a single plane, like if that's what you're doing for the entire song, like that's what's, that's what the people are going to hear. And that's it. Yeah. And so like, you can feel like it's going hard, but honestly, things go a lot harder if you can make them like, you know, have different attitudes. Yeah. And like ebb and flow. Yeah, and then and then high def uh actually wasn't even about that same person. It was more so about like um feeling like detached from people mm -hmm. who deserve better than that. You know what I mean? Like people like after the fact where um and like in like with like our job and being I mean besides last year, like being gone always, it's like you know, it's like, and who wants to be close with someone who always goes away? And like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's like kind of the, the aftermath song and like, kind of like analyzing where I was at, mm -hmm. at that kind of thing. And then during like the takeoff of fandom and like, totally in the way of like how I could be in like a relationship, you know? Wow. Really cool, man. And, uh, with that, Austin, I, I do want to uh, get into your next two songs. So uh, whenever you're ready, take it on yeah. away. Pick her back up and uh, get on in there. Thank you. Thank you. Can you do that horn noise really quick? Yeah, wah, oh, definitely. Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Oh yeah, I'm gonna pop these boys off. It's easier that way. <clears throat> All right, more hearts, more hearts. Actually, do some flame emojis too. Yeah, flame emojis. Um, <clears throat> chicka chicka. How can I? Your black hole and your favorite constellation Well, sometimes Be depressed to death and living on vacation All divide my time between me, myself and I And all my expectations Cause motherfucker, I look good today Self-care, green hair, looking cute today Hello to the fan of Lisa, never tantrum Cause of this Uranus stick up, what do I got but my hands up praying I'm just saying You're either dying or you're playing Either way, I'm in the conversation Woo! You only like me when I'm numb, yeah She won't Ba, 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 ba. Yep, my band and I are like Coldplay. That's allowed to say the fuck word. You, 
you're like the biggest gummy bummy dummy ugly motherfucker yeah because you can't look past caps or the jokes i make because you hate to laugh you're too cool for me but motherfucker i look good today self-care green hair looking cute today yeah hello to the fan please don't have a tantrum because of this arena stick up what do i got but my hands i'm praying i'm just saying you're either dying or you're playing either way i'm in the conversation Woo! you only like me when i'm not Big ass outro, yeah, bitch, let's go. Everybody fuck up your house, let's go. You only like me when I'm numb. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Why did people in like medieval times and like old movies, why did they accept applause like that? <laughs> That's like some like 1920s shit. And like, uh, and also like the, uh, like whenever you have like a queen or something, she does that like queen wave thing. Like, Oh, that's the best way to wave. People dude. go nuts for that. <laughs> uh, yo, we got this event in LA on Saturday. Mm hmm. It's like album release event and there's yeah, like a that's right. yes, girl there's uh people like there's gonna be like uh free food and merch and uh a whole bunch of other like cool stuff but um so yeah come through it's on melrose uh it's the address seven seven five three is that what it is all right all right lucas is checking it out but um um oh my god where was i going with that where were we talking oh yeah so whenever i roll up I'm going to be at yeah, 7753 Melrose. Dude, that's crazy. I remember that. Okay, go, go to it. But, um, wow. I'm going to roll up. I'm going to roll up in the Cadillac. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then just like on the way in, just a quick, Ooh, <laughs> like a everyone leaves. Everyone just leaves. Everyone's like, fuck this guy. <laughs> I never like, even no! liked this band. <laughs> like, yeah. They're like, I'm just here for the free merch. <laughs> Where are the mozzie sticks you promised me, bro? Get me those mozzie sticks. <laughs> oh, great, man. Well, I, I know uh, Water Parks just released a new single for your upcoming album today. Uh, it's called Violet. And uh, we really is. are very excited to hear you play it on the stream today. Who, me? Who? This old Little old me. <laughs> Um, but, but, but if I play this, that means we're done talking. I don't want to get off. Oh no, we're not done. When you play this, oh. we're coming right back and chatting more. Well then if this isn't goodbye, I guess I could play another. It ain't goodbye. It'll never be goodbye. <laughs> Always. See you later. <laughs> Thanks, Austin. You. Yeah. You don't know the deal. Wait, what? I, what? You know what? Throw a bunch of Doritos in here. Yeah, that was quick. Hearts and Doritos. Wait, are those eyeballs? Yeah, bring those in too. All right. Here we go. <laughs> oh yeah, headphones. Thank you, Lucas. <clears throat> you freak me out, so I stay in. Do you see me now? Do you have my pen? No, I don't know how. You'll show up or when, but it freaks me out. So I, you say, boy, I'm not a stalker, but I watch you when you're walking. Call all kinds of people who are me. You love me in such weird ways, like when you lead me back to your place. You do it without words, but don't you worry, cause I heard everything. Now you're looking through the people in the door of my apartment. My panic's at the ceiling, but I'm put down on the carpet. You say, well, I know you're in there. And the way you tease is unfair. And this ain't misery, but I break your knees just to keep you here with me. Just to keep you here with me. You freak me out, so I stay in. Alone on my couch, watching Netflix again 
It's like I'm watching you, but it's about me. And just to be clear, I mean the show, you're Joe, yeah. Boy, I'm not a stalker, but I watch you when you're walking. You call all kinds of people hard me. You let me in such weird ways, like when you lead me back to your place. You do it without words, but don't you worry, because I heard. <laughs> now you're looking through the people on the door of my apartment. I panic's at the ceiling, but I'm back down on the carpet. You say, well, I know you're in there, and the way you tease is unfair. Uh, this ain't misery, but I break your knees to keep you here with me. Keep you here with me. Whoa. Now you're looking through the people. I tore up my apartment. I panic's up the ceiling, but I'm put down on the carpet. But I know you're in there, and the way you tease is unfair. And this ain't misery, but I break your knees. Keep you here with me, just to keep you here with me. Cause she said, Boy, I'm not a stalker, but I watch you when you're walking. You call all kinds of people for me. Whoa, you let me in such weird ways. Like when you lead me back to your place, you do it when I once break your knees to keep you here with me. Yeah. Oh yeah, let him hear it. Oh wow, there's so many Doritos <laughs> flying everywhere. So wasteful. So wasteful. My God. <laughs> so wasteful. I'm hungry. Throw me some of them Doritos, everybody. I love that. <laughs> oh well, awesome. I that's you know that might be my favorite single you guys have released so far. But I want to know yeah. from you what uh, which of your singles are you the most proud of that really came together? Oh, sir. Oh, can't pick so one. Can't, can't pick just one, right? <laughs> yeah, no, like I said, it was narrowed down from like 108. So asking me to pick yeah. one? Okay. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm but, sorry. That 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 was over the line. <laughs> I, will, I will tell you this, though. Snow Globe was one of the ones I was most excited about because mm. it's like just so like far out there. But I just, when I heard that song, I was just like, oh, wow, this feels so good. And then, but I will, and I uh, and I also will say, that Violet has the most immediate replay value for me. Ooh. Which Good. It, I'm, sometimes like there's like a really dark, heavy song or like, like a song is more of like a journey. You know what I mean? It's like watching a, like a kind of like a movie or some shit. Mm -hmm. And just because you don't want to rewatch a movie again right away doesn't mean it's a bad movie. Right. Right. Cause sometimes things are just like, like, like I, I think Gone Girl is like a fucking incredible movie but I wouldn't watch it back to back. Oh dude. I watched that movie for the first time like last year. I, I think like it was mid 2020. It was the time where I was like, well, I, I'm inside a lot. I guess I should watch some movies. So I watched gone girl and man, I, let me tell you, I got to wait another year before I could even think about watching that again, <laughs> but it's really good. Great movie. But that's what I'm saying though. Like, mm -hmm. like I think some of the songs are incredible, but I think some of them have more immediate replay. Like I could watch, I could probably watch like school of rock or like pineapple express or like, Oh yeah. Well, you know, some or like like Clueless or Wedding Singer, some shit. Right, I something probably, easy, so, right? Like I can watch. Um, oh man, uh, I, like Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny. That's my most watched movie of all time. So I've seen that movie like that. ten times. Yeah. So I'm saying, like, you know, those movies I could watch. Like, if I watched it today, mm. and somebody was like, "Hey, I really want to see this," I'd be like, "Okay," like the next day. You know what I mean? Like, I could I could do it again. Mm -hmm. I think Violet is that for me with our song, like with this album. I think that song. Hmm. That one and like maybe one or two others have like the most immediate replay value. Where like I, when it's done, I'm like start it over. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So we say that it's not like picking favorites, but like mm -hmm. it's it's like but a genre. It's which ones make you feel a certain way? Which ones make you feel another way? Kind of thing. Yeah. Cool. And what, what do you think? Um, do you think you're going to incorporate a lot of this new album when you start um doing more shows and whatnot again? Big time, dude. Cool. One thing that, okay, a lot of artists that I really love and respect, what they, like, I like how they handle that kind of thing because it it makes what you're doing while you're doing it more valuable. Mm. Like, like, 
you're never going to go see Kanye. And he's, he's like, Oh, I'm playing all eight Oh eights. Sorry. You know what I mean? It's like, or like, like fallout boys good about it. Yeah. Or like, um, or like 21 pilots is good about it too. Like yes. there's, there's a ton of people that like, like when, when you can tell when like things are still really going well for them mm -hmm. because they're always moving forward. And that's what this needs to be. Otherwise I'm just not, I have no interest in like, like being like, remember this thing from before? It's like, no, fuck you. Like get out of here. <laughs> like if you wanted to see double dare in full, go to that tour, mm -hmm. entertainment, go to that yeah. fandom, go to fandom tour, greatest hits. Like you're going to like, and the thing is in the immediate people might be like, ah, uh, but they're going to look back. And be like, and people are gonna be like, "Fuck! I wish I could have gone to that." Like, right? Imagine like, I wish I could have gone to that specific tour to see that specific album played. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And or like, dude, uh, Donald Glover was good about that too. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like when you I go mean, see it, there's like nothing from Camp anymore. No, nothing from Camp. He, I mean, he completely changed his persona, completely changed his style, and he's just running with that because, like, for someone that like grew up with Camp, yeah. like I loved Camp, and. I, but I can totally appreciate that he just came out with this new style. He does more kind of an R&B style now, too. And he's just like, all right, I'm just going to run with this. Sorry, everybody that liked the other stuff. But, like, you're not going to see that at least for quite a while because it's not just what I'm feeling I'm right now. Doing it for him. And that's what is the best to yep. me. Like, I, I, the people that I love are like, that's how they work. They move forward. And, like, they're like, you know what? I, you can tell they're making art for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. about teasing everybody. It's just right. like, I'm doing this. I know it's dope. You can come along for the ride if you want. Right. And that's how, that's how and I like to approach See, I feel like that's how a lot of artists also gain more fans as well. And I feel like that's how a lot more people get into their music is from different entry points. Like, you know, I, I feel like for certain bands, my entry point is different from somebody else's entry point. Like for me, um, for like water parks, my, my entry point was double dare. That was the album that I was like, this is awesome. I'll get to the rest of the stuff. But once I really, really dig into this and that was really my first introduction from there, I was able to branch out and feel more comfortable in that space. But, uh, I feel like with every band, there is that like initial thing that grabs you. There is. And the thing is, it's so hard for people to like move past that. Like, that's why, that's why you have to switch it up so much because like, you know, you, you probably associate Double Dare with like a certain time. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's right. like, even if I made a bunch of Double Dare songs, they would never compare. Right. Cause it's the nostalgia of it all. Like I'm still thinking like, oh, you know, like it ain't as good as like, I mean like all the songs on Double Dare, right? It just doesn't match what I have in my head, even if it's the exact same thing musically. That's why it has to be better because you're not only battling your old songs, like your old self, but you're battling people's nostalgia. That's hard. That's, that's heavy. So that's why I'm saying like things need to be obviously better. Like, like it needs to be like very apparent that they're mm -hmm. better. Otherwise it's not going to come out. Totally. And also talk to me about the, since we're talking on the subject of new stuff and not trying to beat nostalgia or anything like talk to, talk to me about the new album, um, about specifically the album cover. I was really curious about in the orange jumpsuits you got going on there. Uh, kind of walk me through that. Okay, so I knew that uh, for greatest hits, I wanted it to be a multicolored like era. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because every you know time period, fuck it, I'll say era. I don't care. <laughs> uh, every era is has been marked with like a certain like color. You know what I mean? Or like a color palette. Or like mm -hmm. you know, double there had like blue hair, entertainment purple, fandom right. green. And I knew with greatest hits, I wanted it to be multiple because I wanted to make up like, like normally the greatest hits is like paying tribute to the past, but I wanted this to be like, um, basically giving people a greatest hits, mm. a catalog that they never had. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so the idea behind the, the album art was like, so we're actually wearing yellow clothes, right? Oh, it's like a, okay. It's a yellow. Okay. Gotcha. But I, I talked to the photographer about Phil Knott, shout out. Mm. I saw him taking pictures of like, like ASAP Rocky and like Kanye and Lord and shit. And I was like, let's get him. Uh, <laughs> That's but, great. Uh, yeah, he was, he was wild. It was awesome. But, uh, I, um, I was like, okay, this is a really important part of the concept here. I was explaining to him. I was like, any shadows, like any darkness, I need that to be like scarlet. 
You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because or I mean, like like more red leaning. Sure. Like I don't want there to be like any any black. So I want us to wear all yellow. Obviously, we're like we're on a huge roof. So I was like, there's gonna be blue, and then any shadowing needs to like lean red. Mm. The thing is, it's tricky. Red, blue, and yellow. It can come off very clowny pretty easily. Yeah. So what you have to do when you're working with these palettes is choose like the right shades, and that's how you can like get around it. So the idea was get the yellow clothes, all the shadowing is like red leaning and then the blue, you know what I mean? So we can capture that kind yeah. of tri-tone primary yeah. for the concept. And then we were on the cover, like normally we were kind of against that, mm-hmm. like being on album covers because I mean, normally when it's done, it's not done in like with artistic intent. Right. You know right. I mean? And um, this is the first time you guys have done something like this, like on an album cover at least. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, but the thing is, uh, I was talking to Otto about it. I was like, hey, you might totally hate this. Just tell me if you do. <clears throat> but I think we should be on the cover because it's greatest hits. Everybody's always on their greatest hits cover. You That's know, on like true. a traditional greatest hits kind of thing. So mm-hmm. I was like, listen, because I, I was kind of struggling with like ideas. I had made like a million versions of the album art. And <clears throat> I was like, I think we should be on it because it's greatest hits. And it'd be a lot easier to manipulate the color palette because we could just wear mm we're trying to do you know what i mean and so even the logo for this era for greatest hits is like all different fonts because i wanted it to feel like you know they're low like logos and like titles from different you know eras. right yeah yeah, yeah. exactly from different parts yeah. of the band different like histories of the band and also i, I kind of like how it ends up looking sort of like the um like when you get a ransom letter you know like you get all the time when you get a ransom letter from someone and it has like some letters give us thousands of dollars or we will slap your person <laughs> or something like that. do it motherfucker they deserve it <laughs> yeah no exactly we got it up right here like that it's just yeah exactly i like how you pointed that out just a different they they kind of have the same vibe though it's that kind of a gradient vibe down the middle they were but, done by the same artist mm-hmm. oh cool so, we, so i found this guy that i really loved who just does like text art and he was making a couple things and i was like uh and then I was looking at his portfolio mm-hmm. and I wound up just piecing this together myself. And then I was like, or like a version of it. And then I sent it back and I was like, Hey, can you actually make our own version of this? Where like each letter, like so that way it wasn't just like, you know, pulling his old work and shit. Yeah. I didn't want to be like respectful. Cause you know, I mean, you have to respect art. And um, <laughs> but I was like, Hey, I like that all of these are different sizes and letters or like, like fonts and colors and just all this stuff. Can you make your version of this please and so that's how we got this wow yeah. cool that's awesome letting it like letting him run with it that's that's a great decision love yeah. to see well, that that's the thing. like artists it, it's tricky it can go either way because you know when people are going forward and doing what they do best it still has to line up with your vision right and it's it's it must be tough because you don't necessarily want to insult somebody's work if they worked really hard on something and sent it to you and they're like, this is what I'm envisioning and it's not exactly what you had in mind and then it's yeah it it does get hairy. That's happened mm-hmm. and it's, I'm sure it's uncomfortable, but it's like it matters more to me to like get the vision right than like I don't know like keep someone's feelings like totally safe, you know. Mm-hmm. But totally. the thing, yeah, like the I think the way it, or the reason it worked is because I was able to like mock it up myself and mm. then just be like, Hey, can you do this? Not shitty. <laughs> and we got that. I was like, there it is. Like, there we go. Did it. Mm. Took the note. Did it right. <laughs> I love when that happens. Wow. That's great. And, uh, Oh, also, um, I wanted to ask you since we are, uh, we're kind of, as we kind of wrap up here, we are doing a segment right after this. That's about warp tour. And, uh, I wanted to ask you, if you could have any two dream bands on a warp tour, who would you book for your warp tour? If you got to like, we're talking about like Austin's warp tour here. Who would you, who would you put on the bill? But it's still active band. But it's still active. They must be active. Got you. Okay. Let me think. Um, oh, well, okay. This could go in multiple directions. I could choose stuff that I like, but then I'm like, w- like wishing that on people that I like, which is weird. You know what I mean? I don't want to be like, to someone I love now go out in the sun. It's very hot. You yeah. get no, pr- um, <laughs> it's kind of funny to like punish people. You know what I mean? Like pick bands that I really hate and then be like, you're on at 11 AM. 
<laughs> you're the first band on, and then you have to stay the entire day because you're also the headliner. <laughs> oh, okay. No. Yeah, I would totally punish a band to do that. Um, that would be my choice. But let me. Who do I want to throw under the bus? Hmm. Okay. Uh, that's actually really hard because it's I remember there being a bunch of people that were like. Like my Kim's gonna play Warped Tour. I'm like, no, they like no, like their their legacy deserves more than that. Um, like I mean, no shade to Warped Tour, but you know, what I mean? like my Kim's just like literally like. No, there are a few bands that you know. A lot of bands have played Warped Tour is the thing, and some of them are just way bigger than the event right now. I mean, like a, for if a Green Day, for example, went to play Warped Tour, it would be like, oh my god, like I can't believe Green Day is playing Warped Tour right now. But it would be great for other fans and for me. Yeah. Um, dude, this is actually so hard. You're going to have to change your list, John. I know. I'm going to have to change my list now because you were like, yeah, no, my couple of romance wouldn't play Warp Tour. And I was like, man, I was like, yeah, well, they would Tour. never do that. Oh, no. My bad. Sorry. I don't, don't want to. No trade. worries. You know what? I think I would just. Oh, fuck. I would do just to like try and like be there when I couldn't be. Bring bring Blink and Katy Perry. Fuck Ooh. it. We both did it. So bring them back just yeah, once. That would be for great. I'm yeah. going to be standing alone in a field watching them. <laughs> just by yourself. Private warp tour for me. You guys changed my life. <laughs> I love you so much. They're like... <laughs> Katy Perry at Warped Tour again would be pretty phenomenal. I, I, I still can't believe she played it ever, but the fact that she did, like that performance is so legendary. I keep going to that all the time when I'm on YouTube and stuff. The first time, like I was there and I missed it. Oh, you were at the actual event, but you missed, oh wow, man. Up real bad. I just didn't know who it was yet. True. I feel like, what was that? Like 2000, That was like the girl era. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, must have been, but wow. Um, anyways, uh, Austin, uh, I wanted to thank you so much for coming on the show today. Uh, I had a great time hanging out with you and chatting with you, and uh, I hope everything goes great with the release of your new album this Friday. Uh, but is there anything else that you want to tell your fans or anybody in the chat before you head out? Hmm, everybody, uh, make sure you stretch and take vitamins. Omega 3s, I don't know what they are, but take them. Apparently, they come in fish oil, apparently, that's a thing. I got burpless fish oil. That's thing. Oh, that's the stuff. That uh -huh. is the stuff. Yeah. No fish burps for you. Like, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> um, truthfully, I got nothing else to say. Man, that's how the greats do it. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, also... Uh, Dope. Yeah, no, we would love to have you back anytime too, and um, you know, have fun at your uh, have fun at your thing on Saturday too, the event, the live stream event. I would invite you, but you're you're pretty far away. Yeah, I'm real far. I'm on the other side of the continent. Start running. Re no, actually, that's not true. Mike Posner walked America, and that took forever, so you wouldn't oh, yeah. make it. Not by Saturday. Walk. Maybe I'd make it in like four Saturdays. Yeah. Tell you what, though, if you walk here. All, like I'll pay for a new event. Great. Okay. Just redo the whole thing again. That would be perfect. Actually, that would fit my schedule really nicely if you could. Awesome. <laughs> cool. It's settled. Well, uh, well, thanks Austin. Really appreciate you coming again and uh, good luck with everything and thanks. you know, have a great rest of your week. Thank you for having me. Can you do that horn noise really quick? Oh the yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Austin. 